Hi everybody, it's Vicki Lee. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. Well, we have just gone through the fruits of the Spirit and the different uh, characteristics that are fruits of the Spirit. As you know, you have a tree or a plant. You plant it in the ground. You have to nurture it water it, you have to protect it from cold, you fertilize it, you do everything that you need to to protect that plant and then eventually that plant will bear possibly fruit. I know fruit trees, I was shocked at one time to find out that you can buy a fruit tree and grow it and it takes about five years for the first fruits to appear. Wow. That's how it is with Christians. We come into God's family and we are planted in his family. And if we will stay in it and allow God to water us and to prune us and to do all the things that need to be done at the maker's hand, then we will bear these beautiful gifts of fruit that are good and establish our lives in good ways. And I keep saying religion has given it has given God a bad name sometimes and you go in and it's right and ritual and it's you can't do this and you can do that and and the rules and regulations and it's a free gift it's a relationship and once you get into that relationship and it begins to blossom then you will allow him and trust him we talked about trust didn't we and then you die to all those things like pride and arrogance and you just become humble and you have humility and then you're you're it's okay to be weak and to let his grace go through you and then the fruits of the spirit begin to blossom so today we're going to talk about love and we're going to go to uh corinthians 13 and they're going to talk about um about this concept first corinthians 13 says this if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate, no matter what I say, what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Let's say that again. I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, doesn't always say me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, doesn't take pleasure in the flowering of, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trust God always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies until that completeness. When we see as God sees, we have three things to do. Lead us towards con a consummation. Trust steadily in God, unswayingly, and love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. It's the basis. It says God is love and those who got the, who have God will love. And if there is no love in a person, God is not in them. Boy, that's a big test, isn't it? And love is a high calling <laughs> and love will cost you, doesn't it? To die to your pride, to die to your arrogance and to go to that high calling. And if you don't have love, you're bankrupt. So in this world, I keep doing this analogy, don't I? In this world, we think of, well, you have all these things, all these assets. But if you don't have love, you're bankrupt. You're upside down. When you're in the ministry of God sometimes and you don't have all those assets, the assets, people may look at you like you're upside down but you have love and you're right side up and God exalts and the way the world sees it with the upside down theory, when he exalts, they think, well, that's, that's financial, that's assets. And that could be, but maybe you're rich in ministry. Maybe you're rich in outreach. Some of the richest people in the world are missionaries on foreign fields. 
who don't really have anything but the love of God to reach others and in the eternal weight of glory because this earth only lasts so long our lives the earth itself will only last so long and then what then what that's why I speak so that you can be attracted to the relationship that God gives you and you can endeavor to get out of what's trapping you in this world so many things trap us. We're embracing what traps us. It's empty. It's bankrupt. And you, you can take what you think is upside down, turn it up right side up, and start filling yourself. Filling yourself with the love of God. And when you're born into his family, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You come into his family and you plant your feet firmly in him. Trust. Remember? We just talked about trust. You have to trust him to come in. Trust and know that his word is the mind of Christ and will never leave you nor forsake you like the world does. And then you can come in to true love, the true meaning of love. And it says God is love and those who are in God love. So we don't have the ability to love properly. Unless we come through God. Interesting, isn't it? And it's truth. And it's not a trap. And it's not horrible. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful relationship that you can trust. And the things of this world that come and go or things that disappoint us. The Bible says, peace I give you not as the world gives. My peace I give to you. That's why I speak and tell you it's a relationship. It's the most beautiful relationship you could ever have. Feel free to come in. Feel free to plant your feet. Feel free to be that plant that grows. Get in God's soil. Let him water and do all the things that he needs to do. Trust him and let his love come into your heart. You'll never be dissatisfied because you did it. These are the fruits of the spirit that can only be found by abiding in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope this helps everybody. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe.